Hello everyone, Caddy Wampus Gamer here, bringing you another episode of Minecraft Awakening. Today's episode, we are going to be working on some more Batania stuff. Today, we are going to be making the terrestrial agglomeration plate, and I probably completely said that wrong. I have no idea how to say it. All right, so for this, we are going to need the infusion altar. We're going to need three tough alloys, a block of mana steel, a rune of mana, air, earth, fire, and water. All right, so we should have this here, this here, this, this, oops, nope, not spring. All right, we got those. Let's run over here and get the alloy. All right, three of that. I forgot I can't use the scroll wheel to get stuff out of the ME system. All right, where do we want to go? We want to go to the infusion altar. Thomcraft catacombs there. Okay. So we want to put this in here, and then we want this, this. Uh, let's see. Let's look it up. Now, I was told it doesn't exactly matter the placement as long as whatever is opposite of one is opposite of another. If that made any sense whatsoever. Sometimes I can't explain stuff very good. All right, so as long as this tough alloy ingot is across from a fire rune, this is across from this, this is across from this, and this is across from this. All right, so we want to do this. We got that, then we need water and fire. So water would be here and fire would be here. And then we need earth and air. So earth here, air here, and rune of mana here, I believe. All right, now I don't think I can use my staff to start this. I'm pretty sure I need a scepter. Ah, I can use my staff. That's cool. I did make a Thalmy embossed silverwood staff. This holds 250 of each aspect. And you can put the different wand focuses on it. In order to have enough vis to be able to craft this, I did have to make a silverwood thalmium or a thalmium Bossed Silverwood Scepter. That's a tongue twister. All right. What kind of instability was there on this? Moderate. Okay, didn't look at that, but we can handle that. All right, and we now have the Terrestrial Agglomation Plate, or whatever it's called. <laughs> All right. These little bugs are funny. They spawn in this biome for some reason, and every once in a while, they'll manage to hop up on top of a skull, and when they do, they go crazy. Oh, like this. This is so funny. I have no idea why they do it. They'll just run around in circles on there for a minute or so and then hop off. It's like these strangest thing. Look. That is so weird. It's like they like to get up on top of those skulls. I don't know if they're supposed to, like, path to the highest point or something, but it's really weird. They just... Is he going to do it again? Ah, thought he was going to do it again. He just walked out. Yeah, it's like they path to a high point and then just run around in circles, but it looks super crazy. Oops. It looks super crazy, them just running around on top of a skull. It's just funny. All right. So now we are going to need a lapis. We're going to need one, two, three, four of those. We're going to need one, two, three, four, five living rock. We are going to need sparks. And sparks are made like this. You need white alumar, which is glowstone and like bone meal. It's the easiest thing. You're going to need blaze powder. You're going to need angmelon nuggets which I believe are gold and iron in the smeltery. And you're going to need mystical yellow petals. 
All right, whoa, I didn't need that many sparks. All right, so with the petals, I did have someone on Discord tell me this afterwards, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I never knew this. If you take a petal and you place it down, you get these sparkly things. I'm like, okay, I thought it was for decoration. You know, you can make like a sparkly little trail thing or whatever. You can actually bone meal this and you grow a large flower, which when you craft that, you get four petals. So then you take those four like this and you go like this and ooh, craft them like this. You know, now you got 16 petals and you can just keep going from there. So once you get one flower, you have as many of those petals as you need. All right, it is nighttime, so I'm going to run over here and sleep. It's like a five minute day. All right, now the next thing that we need, we are gonna need some mana pearls. Let's see, we need mana diamond, mana pearls, and mana steel ingots. All right, so the spark. What sparks do is you place those down over top of mana pools like this. And the whole reason I made all of this mana ahead of time was so that we could do this episode because it is going to cost us a bunch of mana. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make a pattern like this with living rock. And then we're going to take lapis and we're going to fill in here. And then we're going to take the plate and we're going to put it on top of here and then we're going to shift click on it with a spark to put it over here. Now what these sparks do is they will drain from the mana pool and they will send it to a nearby spark that needs mana, which would be this one. So all nine of these will send power or mana to this plate right here for it to use. All right, so if we go like this and we put these in our hot bar and we are gonna have to stand back a little. Let's see if I can get them on here. Yeah, see, this is gonna be harder than it looks. Okay, one of those, nah. The easiest way to do this is with a dropper, but I believe they have been disabled in this pack, which is really annoying. So we're just going to do steps up like this. And we throw one of these, we throw one of these, and we throw one of these. And I didn't get them on the plate again. All right, let's try this again. Probably want to aim right here. Okay, a little bit down. There we go. Now that lights up with like a little symbol. Whoa, that went really fast. And it says it uses about a half of a pool of mana. So I should have enough to do 18, I believe. And the reason it goes so fast, because like I did it in a test world and it did not go that fast. The reason it goes so fast is the fact that I have nine of these going into here. Okay, and see you can't create one if there's anything else on there. So you have to collect it each time. Which is also another annoying thing because I'm just going to have to sit up here and keep jumping down, collecting, and going back and doing it again. Whoops. All right. Now, what can we do with Terra Steel? One of the main things that we are going to be doing, and that will be next week's episode, or I say next week's episode, tomorrow's episode. I don't know why I said next week. I'm not that far ahead with recording. I am trying to get a few days ahead of time because I have some stuff coming up this week and I'm going to be busy. So I'm actually recording. This is my second episode that I've recorded today. I'm hoping for a third, possibly a fourth. We'll see. I do want to make the portal to Alfheim in the next episode. I believe I have everything that I need because we need we 
we are going to need glimmering living wood, which I can handle that. And we need, where is it? Ooh, what is this? Manatide bellows. I'm going to have to look that up. Ooh, these things, cocoon of cap caprice. I think that is. Caprice, caprice. Those are interesting. You can actually spawn in animals, and you can also spawn in villagers with these. All right, so let's see. Where's that last piece that I need for the portal? I can never find what I need, because I don't know the name. Oh, Elven Gateway Core. Here it is. Shadow Steel Rune, Block of Terra Steel, a wand focus of equal trade, Essence of Entanglement, Pattern Framed Living Wood, which how do I get that? Okay, just like that. So that's no big deal. So we do actually need a full block of Terra Steel. For the gateway thing. Now the other thing, I believe we need... Do we need these to open the portal? I think we do. So we're... Ooh. Terra Steel Nuggets. So we're going to need a couple more for that. And the... Viroxes, Viroxeres, however you pronounce that. I don't know why they can't just give them easy to pronounce names. I guess because if you can't pronounce it, it seems a little more magical. All right, so what are some of the other things I want to work on with Batania? Let's see. I do want to get the portal open because we need that in order to get the stuff to make better mana spreaders. We are going to need Terra Steel for quite a few things because in order to build the jetpack, let's see, collect that. I hate the fact that I just have to keep hopping up and down on here. I'm sure there's a way to automate this with everything in the pack, but I'll figure it out later. All right, so jetpack's not that bad, but once you get up to this one, you need a terra steel chest plate, which is a little bit expensive. Not not too bad actually. Hmm. Maybe we could get flight ring soon because I would really like a flight ring. Oops. I'll throw that. All right, let's see. What else do I want to do? I want to make some of the different um, lenses for these things. The Botanical Brewer, I really want to get better mana spreaders for that because the Warp Ward or the Incense of Warp Ward or Warp Warding or however it's called takes quite a long time to make. Like It takes like a minute or two where if I could get Better mana spreaders, you know, I could cut that time in half or down to like one third, which is definitely something that, that I want to work on. So what else can we use Terra Steel for? A mana mirror, which the sparks can be augmented. And the mana mirror, basically you put it in your, you have it in your inventory and you link it to a pool. Like what I could do is I could put a mana pool over here with a spark on it, and then I can add, let's see, there are upgrades for the sparks. If you use them by themselves, they just supply with whatever needs it. There's dispersive, there's dominant, there's recessive, and there's isolated. And I'm not sure how all of these work, but I do know if I have a dominant one, if I put a mana pool down here, I put a spark over it, I put a dominant one on it, it should pull from all of these and always keep that mana pool filled as long as there's mana in these. Then I can take that mana mirror that we were looking at, I can bind that to that pool, I can carry it around in my inventory, and whatever is in this mana pool will be available through that mirror. Which means if I built 50 of these, or whatever, and all of them have spark, and I keep them all filled, 
and then going into one with the mana mirror, I should never have to come back and like fill up my ring or anything like I do. All right, so we got quite a bit accomplished today. I know it might have been a little bit boring watching me stand there and throw stuff off of a stack of dirt and just collect items, but I didn't want to get into too much else because there's a lot to do in the next episode. Until next time, Caddy Wampus Gamer, signing off.